Okay, so it, we're now officially entered into here in the United States of America, we're entering into the political season. This is the time that we now begin to vote. In September, early voting starts in September. So remember, you can vote in September. I prefer to vote after all the early voting and everything's done. The only time I'll do an early vote is uh, if I'm going to be traveling or what have you. But, uh, but I don't even think about it. I want to wait till the last minute to vote. I want to wait till the day to vote. And I'll tell you why. Because I don't know what that politician is going to do. I don't know what they're going to do between the time early voting starts to the time the day that actually starts. I mean, what if that politician did, uh, I don't know, commits murder, worst case scenario, uh, does something that I completely cannot stand up for, and I've already put my vote on there. You cannot retract your votes and change your mind. Once you vote, that's it. So the first thing I'm going to say in today's uh, talk is don't early vote. Only early vote if you're traveling and it's impossible for you to be able to vote on that day. And even then, wait till the latter part. Don't do it so early. Be anxious for nothing. Don't jump on it so quickly. Just wait to the very end and then go ahead and vote. So um, that's that's one of the things I want to say. Now, when we look at these two, somebody asked me, you know, well, what do I subscribe to? Well, first of all, I am an independent. I am com independent. That doesn't mean I'm going to vote for the independent person because now they want to treat independent as if it's a party. It's not. What that means is that I may not vote in a primary. Now, the beautiful thing about an independent is that I could still pick a primary that I want to vote for. And sometimes I remember I voted in the in the Republican primary and then and then uh, you know, the next cycle, election cycle, I went to go vote in the Democratic primary and they had it written down that I was a registered Republican. I said, wait a minute. I did not register to be a re regis registered Republican. I made them change it. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. A little dust flooding around there. So when I vote in a primary, then, of course, and I'm, you're only allowed to pick that one party that you're going to vote for. And you can't vote in a, in a, a Democratic primary. You can only vote you know, Republican or Democrat. Once you vote in the primary, who you want to run for office. And uh, and that was one of the things that I've always, uh, I said, why would they do that? And I can understand they don't want you to skew the other person's vote or whatever. There might be some wisdom to it if you think about it. Maybe it's not a bad idea to do that, you know, and let the other party skew it. Why not? Let's really find out who votes for, for what, you know? Now, if you're voting for an individual, the person almost like a like a populist party, then you got to think about that. What don't vote for somebody because it's, that person is popular, and that was one of the challenges that we had uh, with with uh, uh, with the last the, the last two elections is you had a celebrity that was running, so it's very popular. So a lot of people didn't know what he stood for. Some people were voting against him only because they criticized what his hair looked like and his skin color because of tanning boots. You know, and so you didn't pay attention to what he really stood for. And so and that's that. So there's a there's a positive and a negative to voting for voting for the um, uh, the populist party or the populist candidate. Now, I do want to say this. I encourage everybody to vote. And what you should be voting is on policies, uh, not on uh, popularity. And what happens a lot of times in. Uh, in the in the in the conventions is there's a true psychological I'm gonna call it a disorder a psychological disorder that people jump on what is popular because it's popular N not not because they agree with what it is that's being said or what the or what the um, uh, what the actual policy is so Anyway, that's what I wanted to say there. Now that both the DNC and the RNC is done, take a look at their policies from this moment forward. What are they saying? Um, try to refrain from a, um, a protest vote. Uh, protest votes are, I can't stand this person, so I'm going to vote for that person. Try to vote for a person that has whatever that policy is that you agree with. And then you vote for that policy and the policies that you agree with should be the policies that that do affect you and your community. Now, you can also vote for the pop for the for the pop for the policy that affects the the, the entire country. You could do that. Uh, but what I like to do, I, I used to vote for what would be best for the entire nation. But then I began to discover that different states have different 
different concerns and so forth. So, and who am I in South Texas knowing what is good for Utah? I have no idea. So I just began to vote and switched everything to vote to what do I stand for? There were things that I stood for that I wanted to vote in those policies. Okay. So then that's where I would vote. Um, the other thing I want to say is don't put your trust in a politician because ultimately all politicians, it's all about how good are they at selling their lie or their dream. How good are they at selling it? Doesn't mean that they're going to be able to fill it because we have what's called bureaucrats in the nation. We have bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. that they're supposed to, air quotes, they're supposed to do what the elected official is needing done. But we've learned in the, in, um, you know, in the two presidencies back, we learned that uh, the bureaucrats actually refrain if they don't agree with the elected official, they actually suppress the activity of getting it done. So, you know, that's uh, how do you change that through prayer? And ultimately, that's what's needed to be done. Now, on that note, before you ever vote, before you pull a lever, before you scratch off a little, you know, fill in a little dot, push the button, before you do any of that, go before the Lord and ask the Lord which direction he wants you to vote so after you've already weighed all the consensus and all the different policies and what is it that you agree with and you decide who you're going to vote for before you do it say father this is the one i'm thinking about voting for but i want to ask you who do you who do you lead me to vote for who would you want me to vote for because he might change it he really might change it the bible says it is God who lifts up and tears down kings. He wants us to pray for those in authority. But it's important for us to know that God is sovereign. And he's the one that actually manipulates everything that needs to be done according to his will and his purpose. And listen, not every uh, leader that he puts in place, he puts leaders in there because they're the good of their ability. Sometimes he puts them in there because of the weakness of their ability because he's trying to do something. I'm just saying. You got King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, you got Cyrus, uh, you got uh, all these wicked, uh, wicked kings. You got that all that were all leadership. And if the scripture says he's the one that puts them in position, that's what I'm saying. It's all I'm saying. And uh, I'll tell you a real quick story. Um, I was uh, it was back when uh, uh, Clinton was running uh second term and i believe he was running against dole yeah because the first term was bush um george bush number one the second term he was running uh, uh, uh bill clinton was running against um uh senator bob dole and i was going to vote for dole at that time i was a republican and i was going to vote for dole and uh so and i just the, the evilness of the d and the democrats that's that's how i felt at that area because um I'm a pro-lifer. That's what I am. I'm for pro-life, but I still know that there's a important aspect of being able to have a choice. So, um, and that's for a deeper conversation if you want to have it. Now, um, here um, I'm thinking. Okay, I'm gonna, we got to we got to tear down Clinton. We got to vote for Dole. And and at the church, I I turned on the debate, and because it landed on a Wednesday. And so what I did is I said, well, we're going to do worship. We're going to pray. We're going to go before the Lord. And then I'm going to put the debate on the big screens. And we probably had one of the largest crowds that we had in the church. And everybody was there listening to the, to the debate. And I was writing down all my notes that I was going to talk about afterwards. When the Spirit of God told me, I want Clinton, Bill Clinton, to be the president. <laughs> I said, what? I said, how, how could this be? It, my head was spinning. And that's not what I wanted. And he says, here's why. And he gave me real understanding. I mean, just really answered my questions. That taught me how incredible God's <clears throat> sovereignness is. And taught me, I'm going to put people in office where I want them, how I want them to do what I want them to do, even to the detriment of his children wow and i didn't like it i was so upset that night oh my god i took all my notes i just threw them all away because if god says 
That's who's going to win. There's no question about it. That's who's going to win. And so I was mad and I was going to talk about all the different points afterwards. And after I just said, you know what? We need to go before the Lord. we got to pray. And so we just prayed and I turned everybody loose. And then, of course, the election came and Clinton won. And here's what happened is the Lord wanted to get some things done. It wasn't that Clinton had the greatest policies is that sometimes God wants wicked people to govern in judgment or in transformation or in changes, or he might want to use them to also show this is how great my power is. I mean, I think of, uh, of, of Daniel and hear how the heart of King Nebuchadnezzar changed because of Daniel and King Nebuchadnezzar wanted everybody to worship him. But after Daniel did what he did, you know, he turns around and he says the, the God of Daniel is the one true God and the one living God. And it was an incredible declaration of this wicked king that was made, given a declaration that God was, was the one true God. Now, think about how, how awesome is that? A godly person say that God is God, that, that's a given. But when you have a wicked person saying that God is God, well, now you got something there, you know? And so God knows how to get his point across. And so let's take that to our own standard. There may be things that we're going through that we don't want to go through. I didn't pray for this. I didn't ask for it. Lord, I didn't want this to happen. I mean, it's happened in my life where I, I thought I was going to lose everything. And I said, Lord, I'm praying. I'm tithing. I'm working. But all my income, everything was depleting, depleting, depleting. And I said, I don't understand what's going on. And then when everything was said and done, I received the biggest blessing ever in my entire life. And when I look back, I saw the wisdom of God. But in the middle of it, oh, my God, I thought all hell was turned loose. I didn't realize that God had an ark. He had made an ark, and my family was inside that ark, and God had taken care of us during that whole time, like 14 years, took care of us. And I said, oh, my God, only you, Lord, are so awesome. And so ultimately, it's God that's going to put the person in there. Now, that doesn't mean stay home. That means do your part. Do your part because the Lord may need certain amount of people to vote because I want these people, I want this person to be in office, right? And then if you sit there and you stay home, you're actually walking in disobedience of God. You're walking in disobedience. If you don't vote and God needs you to vote, you're walking in disobedience to God. Well, you know, if the Lord's already in it, then why do I? No, the Bible says you got to ask. There's a path that he's taking. There's a future that he's building based upon our petition and request. If not, you know, he might just leave it, you know, he just may leave it. So anyway, so make sure that you're you're in tune with the policies, that you vote to the policies and so forth. One last comment I'm going to talk about this season. And this is a hard one. You ready for this? This is hard for all of y'all. I'm telling you, you got to stay away from news. I'm talking about news channels. I just got to get away from those news channels. All of them. I mean, I... If I get into a, you know, a, a banter or a debate with somebody, they immediately, sometimes they say, oh, you're listening to whatever network is it. I don't even have cable television. I don't have cable. I don't listen to the news at all. I don't listen to CNN. I don't listen to Fox. I don't listen to MSNBC. I don't listen to uh, Newsmax. I don't listen. I don't pay any attention to any of them because they're all skewed and they're all bought. It's as simple as that. And it's, and I know for a fact it is, because they, if they have poor ratings, their advertisers go away. So they have to do the sensationalism, breaking news, uh, update, quick update. Can't believe what Trump did. I can't believe what Biden did. And, uh, you know, all that, all 